course. Hello and welcome back to another video. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at two date functions that we have available to us in Excel. Uh, these two functions have been very useful to us, we use them very regularly and we felt therefore it should be shared with you and these should be uh, or make up some of the essential functions that you should have in your pocket because uh, there'll be a multitude of um, reasons or scenarios that come up in Excel where you might want to use one of these and it will help simplify what you're doing in Excel. So those two functions are going to be end of month or EO month and E date. Uh, so we have two different um, functionality available those. Uh, so the first one end of month, simply put, it will allow you to feed a date in. So like we have there in line three, looking at columns B and C, uh, the 1st of July, and that will return to us uh, the last date available to us in that month. So for this will be the 31st of July 2018. Uh, one of the other factors in there is it allows us to say that we either want to return the uh, last date uh, or the end of that month for our current month we have fed in or we can add dates uh, to or take from that as well. So that'll do sort of a multitude of things of us. So we could either say okay we want the end of the month but we want it off the following month or the prior month or for the, uh, the end of the current month we're feeding in. Uh, so that one being the 1st July 2018. Uh, so that's one functionality we have there of end of month. With E-Day uh, what that will do it will predominantly E-Day is going to be used for to say okay we, we're happy with the uh, the date in terms of the number so if we again go to the right hand side here for columns F to H so the 1st of July 2018, it allows us to take in that date. Uh, we can then feed in, uh, similarly to our end of month function, uh, the number of months we wish to add or take away or and enter a zero. Um, well, you could enter a zero, but I don't know why, so I'll take that back. Enter the number of months you'd like to add or take off of that date, and then it will turn to you um, that result. So in that first one there, where we've said the 1st of July 2018, number, to, number of months to add is uh, plus one. So the result for that will be uh, to return the 1st of August 2018. And it will just return the 1st of August uh, 2018, whereas our previous function we looked at will obviously give us being the end of the month, it will give us the last date within that month. So let's go through a couple of the scenarios. Uh, so we just explain there what the two functions will do, but we'll go through a couple of examples for each, just so we're clear on one, how the function works, and two, obviously what the results are gonna come back with. So to do with the first one in B and C, where we're looking at end of month, to enter this function, all you need to do is, as always, our equal sign, and this time type E, O, and then month. And you can see from the prompt we've got there, returns the serial number of the last day of the month before or after a specified number of months. So for all of these, uh, what we're going to just do in here is enter our function, so we've done our uh, open brackets. So we can enter our date, so it's the 1st of July 2018, and then our comma to go into the second part, which is months. So this is where we can enter the number of months we wish to add or subtract from that date. For our first main example, we're just going to put a zero there because we don't want to add any dates. We want it just to still be that same month and year. It's just adding, uh, finding the last date in that month. So if I then do close brackets, you can see that the result is the 31st of July 2018. And we can just pull that down and you can see that regardless of the date uh, in terms of the day, so we've got the 1st, 23rd or 25th, regardless of the day, it's always going to pull through that last uh, date within that month. What we can also do here is rather than have that the zero we could put in here we want to add two months or well, let's just do one it's a bit simpler just add one month and you can see what's going to do it will take the 1st of July 2018 it will go to the next calendar month what is uh, August 2018 and it will then find the last um, day within that month as you can see there and that also works the same way that if we added a minus into there it's going to pull through the date before. And we can just pull that through just so you can see that example all the way through. So this works particularly well if you're trying to group data or if um, depending on re any reporting structures, if you're trying to group all of your days or all of your dates um, to be towards the end of the month. So say we've got 
I know various uh, items or date entries that have happened throughout a month. You might want to group them all to be the end of the month for argument's sake. So this is a great way of being able to do that. And that's using end of month. So again, hopefully you enjoy that one. Uh, lots of uses will be, um, I'm sure that'll give you uh, for availability to uh, manipulate your data and to move it into a certain format. So that's end of month and how to use it. And then you can just see it there, the function just clicked in there just so you can see it one last time how that function looks. So it's just made it those two arguments. So the first being the date you want to feed in and then the number of months you wish to add or subtract from that. If you don't want to add any month and you just want the last date of the month you're feeding in there, then all you need to do is just add a zero into there rather than the minus one. So if I just do that then now, zero, you can see we've got the end of March there. Cool, so if we go to this next example here, so columns F to H, this time we're going to use the edate function. So our primary purpose is just to uh, retain the same um, date number, but we just want to add a number of months to that. So simply to do that, it's exactly the same for, or very similar format to end of month. So what we need to do for this one is we're going to do edate and open brackets. And we can see that in E date we've got to enter our start date and then after the comma our second argument is the number of months. So all we need to do is select our date, so the first one here is 1st July 2018, followed by a comma and then select the number of months. So this first one here is number 1 and that's how the function looks in its entirety. So all we do is then hit enter and you can see the result that we get. And if we just drag that down, you can see what that uh, all, what that looks like throughout all of the examples we've got. So for the next one down, you can see we've got May, the 23rd of May. So this is a good example of showing the number of days. So those that number of 23 will be retained. And all it's doing is adding on four calendar months so that we get to the September. Because uh, four months from May gives us September. And the same for other examples, the more extreme one being this one here, where we're adding six months to uh, 5th of August. So obviously it's then going to realise that then it's, um, it's overgone uh, a calendar year. So we're now into February 2019 rather than our starting point of August 18. And this works the same as previously discussed. If you want to take months off of this, we can do so. So our starting date here was the 8th of Jan 19. With minus, uh, minus three calendar months, so that then gives us the 8th of October 2018. So as you have seen, they are very straightforward functions to use, but that can just give us that extra functionality to enable us to do any particular reporting requirements we might have. We hope you enjoyed that video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit that bell notification button so that you are notified every time that our videos um, come out onto YouTube. We've also got links below to our Instagram and our Facebook page uh, where we also share updates of when new videos will be coming out. So again, if you haven't already, do give those a follow and that will help you stay up to date. And lastly, any questions, as always, Instagram, Facebook, as just mentioned, or drop us a comment um, below this video, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you very much, and we will see you in the next video.